Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. This is the sixth bonus video in the series uh, where we've been looking at setting up virtual mailboxes and server name identification. In this video we're going to be looking at connecting an email client to our recently modified email server. This is going to allow us to show that the authentication approach has changed a little which is very important and I'm going to labor that point a couple of times and it's also going to allow us to show that generally speaking uh, the system is working as it should. Now this is quite a short video um, it almost didn't require its own dedicated video but I created a dedicated video to this because of the importance of the subtle change in how authentication now works uh, now that we're using virtual mailboxes so I really want to make that point clear uh, back in early 2020, I was stuck on this for a couple of hours trying to work out why my SMTP server was working fine, my IMAP server was working fine, and I could send and receive emails from the server no problem, yet I couldn't get IMAP to authenticate with my virtual mailboxes or virtual users. The actual solution in the end was painfully simple. Um, and in fact, Thunderbird now automatically uh, solves this for us a little bit, and I'll talk about how in a moment. So that's the reason we're doing it. Um, so let's crack on and get Thunderbird open and get our email client connected to our modified email server. Of course, before I do, just a quick reminder that I have a Patreon account. Uh, if you'd like to receive one-to-one -one support with me, access videos early, as much as two months early, uh, or just wish to contribute to my work as a way of saying thanks because you found it useful, please do check out my Patreon account. It would be very much appreciated. Um, I have to mention actually that it's because of my patrons that I've continued this course. It's a very slow growing channel. Uh, I get no uh, funding from anywhere. So patrons are essential and incredibly appreciated. So thank you to my existing patrons. Right. So with all that over, let's get going. This is my Thunderbird window on my screen. Um, as you can see, I currently do not have any email accounts connected to my Thunderbird client. I've deleted them all just for this video, or, or at least um, removed them from the client uh, so that I can start with a nice clean slate and keep things simple. So as I've mentioned, the objective here is twofold. Demonstrate that our email server is, is uh, contactable um, and that IMAP works by being able to see the inboxes on our new virtual mailbox and SNI server, but it's also to show you the subtle difference in how we authenticate. So let's get cracking. I'm going to do this by adding two users and I'm going to start with the user Fred. So if you remember, I have four users on my uh, email server at the moment. If you recall the VMAPS file we created earlier in the video series, there were four users, Info, Bob, Info and Fred. So let's add um, Fred first. So you can go to the top right of your Thunderbird window if you want to follow along, click on new and then click on existing mail account as we're going to be adding an existing mail account. I feel I should mention that Thunderbird often changes how it looks. Uh, so this might be different when you use it. However, the information that you're going to put in is exactly the same. So I'm going to give it a name. It's going to be Fred. That's the name of the user. This can actually be anything you like at all. The email address, of course, is fred at utilizeme.com because Fred was associated with the Utilize Me domain. So that's the email address that I know exists on my email server. I'm now going to copy and paste the password from my other screen here. I've got it saved for the sake of time. There we go. And I'll click continue. Now what Thunderbird's going to do is it's going to probe my server to work out what the correct subdomain should be to connect to the mail server to work out what protocol there should be, what ports to use, and what encryption to use. And you can see it's done that here. So it's ascertained that we're using IMAP and SMTP protocols. Uh, we're doing it through the mail subdomain of our domain utilizeme.com and that we're using start TLS as the encryption. Now, an important point to note here is it's assigned the username to the user Fred. It's basically taken that, I am, I'd imagine, from here. It could have taken it from your name, but I think it's probably taken it from here and you could find out if you messed with it. This is important because when we were authenticating 
through our Linux user accounts before we introduced virtual mailboxes, the username did indeed need to match the, um, the name of the Linux user account. So Fred would have been fine. But now that's not the case. Now your username needs to match the actual user, which is a fully qualified domain name uh, for that user instead. So it has to be a fully qualified domain name. If you remember in the settings for the server, we no longer have a user called Fred. We have a directory structure, which says a user is called Fred because they have their own directory. But the actual user, if you recall, is a fully qualified domain name. Again, think back to the VMAPS file. So if I click configure manually, you'll see at the bottom it's assigned it as Fred. Now, if I, if I did this correctly, I would change this to fred at utilizeme.com in my case, and you do it as user at domain.com yourself. But um, Thunderbird is now quite clever. Very recently, if I keep it as just Fred, it'll actually update it for me. I don't have to do it, so that's nice. But the reason I just want to stop here and mention this is that it wasn't that long ago that when I did this in Thunderbird, and I'd imagine also this might happen in other email clients, it'll tell you that there's a configuration error on your server or the username and password uh, is wrong. Now, if you get that message, you're very likely to be thinking that the configuration is wrong because we've made so many changes, that would be the first place you'd look. And indeed I did. I spent a good two hours trying to work out what was wrong with my configuration, only to discover that actually uh, there was nothing wrong with my configuration. I hadn't used a fully qualified domain name for my username. So that's the last time I'm going to labor that point, but make sure this says at followed by your domain. However, as a demonstration of Thunderbird's capability, I'm just going to click done and it should correct this for me and it will add the account hopefully to my Thunderbird client session. There we go. So it's very likely what Thunderbird has done. It's tried Fred, failed, and then tried Fred at domain. That would be my guess as to what's happened. So if I right click now on the uh, email address up here and click on settings, I just want to show you where it's done that. So I've clicked on settings. Under the main settings, I'm going to go down to the edit SMTP server button, just here. I'm going to click on it. And then you can see that it says username fred at utilizeme.com. Now, as I've mentioned previously, Thunderbird didn't do that and it would just be Fred and it wouldn't have worked. I would have got errors, but now it seems to have automatically filled it in for me. Now, if you're using a different version of Thunderbird, if you've got a previous configuration and you just want to migrate it over to using uh, the virtual mailbox setup, you'll need to go into the account settings as I have and you'll need to make sure that you make sure your username is a fully qualified domain name, okay? So that's great, we've got it working, we've got IMAP connected correctly for Fred. Now let's do it for another domain just to show it's working. So I'm going up to the top right again, clicking new, clicking on existing mail account, and now I'm going to add Bob. So Bob, Bob at, in this case, it's singleentity.com, uh, which is the email address that Bob is associated with. And as before, I'm just going to paste in the password and click continue. As before, Thunderbird is going to find the configuration settings that work by probing the server. And it'll come back with IMAP SMTP mail dot single hyphen entity dot com and start TLS, hopefully. There we go. Yet again, it said username Bob. Um, this time, just to prove a point, I'm going to actually change it myself to what it should be. And it's Bob at single hyphen entity dot com as that is the username that the server will understand. Click done. And it'll probably be quicker this time because it's no longer having to try multiple configurations. It was, that was notably quicker. So my assumption might be right here that it tries different things. So there we go, we've got two different domains hosted on the same IP address on our same Raspberry Pi uh, in our single Thunderbird client. That's pretty cool. I find it really exciting that this is possible. Um, so I'm hoping that you share my excitement there and I'm hoping it works for you as well. Okay, so we've determined that IMAP is working as it should. Let's just check that SMTP is. 
We know IMAP is working because we are able to retrieve the inbox um, uh, and these, these boxes are appearing. But what we need to do now is we need to check that the uh, SMTP server is working and the best way to do that is to send an email. So I'm going to write an email from Bob to Fred. So write email to fred at utilizeme.com. Hello, hello, and then send. Excellent. I am quite relieved to see that we now have an email in Fred's inbox. So we now know that IMAP and indeed SMTP are performing as they should. And I've demonstrated the subtle change in how we authenticate the account via the email client. So hopefully you're fully prepared to set this up yourself. Um, if not, then watch this video to come because in the next video, I'm going to be covering a few ways of debugging Dovecot and Postfix. And I'm going to explain a few things that are worth doing if you're finding you're having trouble. When I first set up SNI and virtual mailboxes, I did have a bit of trouble. It wasn't plain sailing. So don't feel bad if you're having trouble. I used quite a few tools to help me understand the problems. So I'm going to be sharing them with you in the next video. In the videos after that, we're going to be moving on to checking that since we've changed the server, we want to make sure that our new domain uh, or domains still meet the required standards to end up in recipients inboxes, not their spam boxes. So we'll get back onto that after the next video. Uh, so that's it for this video. If you could kindly like the video if you found it useful before you leave, uh, that would be great. Uh, also, if you could um, subscribe to my video series if you haven't already, that would also be great. And just a reminder that if you want to receive uh, or have access to videos early, take a look at my Patreon account, or if you want to have some one-to-one -one support, or would just like to support my work, please do check it out. So that's it. Hopefully you found that useful and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.